Hello beautiful star souls and welcome to my channel. I hope all of you are doing amazing. This is another pick a card reading and I'm super delighted to bring this for you guys because we're gonna have some fun investigating. Um, I wanted to do who is this person really reading uh, type of a pick a card because I feel like sometimes we think we know people or we make assumptions about people but we don't really see what's underneath. Not sometimes, in fact, a lot of the times we project or we have subjective ideas and then some of them can turn out correct, some of them will not. So I would love to, you know, help you validate or or disvalidate your um, understanding of someone. Perhaps some of you intuitively get people, but still I wanted to help you see what is their mask or their persona that they present to you and what is actually underneath. And with the mask and the persona, we're gonna dive a bit deeper because this could be this could be part of who they really are, it's just the only part they show you, but th there might be other aspects of this person that you don't know yet, for some reason they've kept from you. So it's not just about, oh, this is their fake side and this is their true side. A human being is much more complicated than that, so we're going to look at what they present to you, and you can see this as a mask or also the persona that they play when they're with you because maybe they feel like this is what you accept from them only and then we're going to see what is truly underneath what is underlying certain behaviors and and patterns and so on and so forth so you gain a better understanding of a friend a relative your partner whoever you have in mind truly um, so we have oracle cards here and I'll be also adding tarot cards as we go and yeah we've got three piles pile number one pile number two and pile number three now I don't have any crystals or anything like that because when I was channeling um, and I was asking, you know, for divine intelligence to come through, reveal the truth for the sake of healing and moving on, um, for the sake of seeing the, you know, just having, having an idea of what is truly going on. And I believe knowing the truth always serves for the highest good of all, no matter what the consequences are at the end of the day, the truth serves the highest good of all. So that's what I asked for um, when I was, you know, channeling my guides and your guides as well. And I got this message to just leave the piles as they are. I wanted to organize them, you know, fix them, make them pretty and aesthetic. But they were like, no, just leave them and let people choose intuitively this is not a fancy reading, don't make it such. And I listened and yeah, it's not gonna be a fancy reading. So here I am over explaining myself, but I just feel like you guys should know what is going on energetically before you dive into your pile. So yeah, I have picked random tarot decks that I'll be adding, as I said, and I don't know which one I'm going to assign to different piles. So. I just rely on intuition and what I get in the moment and yeah, that's pretty much it. Now you can pause the video, take your time, choose maybe based on the number of the pile or the timestamp or just whichever pile draws you in. Use your own technique, use your intuition, I always advise that and yeah, let's get into it. So let me remove these. And let's start off with pile number one. Hello and welcome pile number one to your reading. So let's see. We have um, different cards. Now, these cards will reveal the part of this person that they show to you. Not necessarily their fake persona and identity, but it is kind of the mask or it is the, the only level you know them on. Um, and then we're going to see what's even deeper than that. So what is underneath? So I think this can work even if you know someone very well. Um, still, there might be parts of them that they don't want to share, but that might be, you know, just 
crucial for this relationship to work out or to be healed or to be surrendered and so on and so forth. Now, let's open the cards. Oh, okay. Uh, you have the fool and the healer. Oof. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I'm already getting a lot of things. First of all, this is a beautiful alignment with the stone. I love this. Uh, I'm going to hold that actually. This person, the aspects of them that you know is that this person knows how to uplift the energy in a room. Um, I think you guys already know that they sometimes would pretend to be happy, but underneath there is some sadness, you know, there are some struggles. But this person um, perhaps doesn't like to talk about what they go through because they have assumed the role of the healer, of the advisor, of the wise one, of um, the one that people come to when they need somebody. So they can oftentimes play... Uh, play the fool archetype, meaning they would pretend that they're happy, everything is going all right, or they would make jokes, or they would make jokes about tough things that they've been through. Um, perhaps that is their way of healing themselves or protecting themselves um, also. And yeah, you can see this person as someone fun and someone very gifted in the healing arts or whatever is is it that they do, um, you may view it as a healing um, modality, whether they do art, whether they do science, whatever it is, you know, um, it's a healing practice. They add healing energy into it. Now with the fool, I'm also getting that this could be someone who is a great comedian or artist or actor and um, you guys really appreciate their acting skills. Um, I feel like this is someone who can make a lot of jokes and they can be a bit brutal with their jokes, if I have to be honest. Um, they may have this dark humor, um, perhaps some Scorpio or Virgo placements, like dark humor, um, Capricorn to you. <laughs> um, they can have this for sure and many of you may wonder, you know, how... Is this just a mask? Is this just camouflage? Are you hiding something underneath um, this joke you just made about yourself or a situation? But this is, again, this is just their way to um, heal, release the pain of a situation or of an experience by laughing about it, making a joke about it. And yeah, they could be a comedian, like actually being part of a theatrical group or something and be uh, play a lot of um, comedy roles. Something I think you guys should discuss with this person is, um, again, this level of um, joking about, sh <laughs> about stuff, I was going to say something else, joking about stuff, um, because it's funny, because it's almost like they unconsciously can wound people so that later on they can heal them, and there is this dynamic going on where for example, they joke about stuff and this stuff can be a bit offensive. They joke about maybe, I don't know, like social, social norms, race, like they can joke about actually, you know, quite hurtful um, things and then they would express an opinion that is so open-minded, accepting, embracing of all people, um, embracing of all situations, understanding, again, open-minded to just a lot of different people and um, situations. And you can get confused, like, okay, you joked about that and perhaps they hurt you sometimes, but because they're so, they appear thick skin, you want to do it too, so you also try to appear thick skin, but then they express this sort of opinion that is very embracing, healing, accepting, um, non-judgmental, and you feel like, you feel healed. And it's interesting because, again, they 
create this dynamic where they hurt people, maybe unintentionally, I think for most it's unintentionally, just because they're trying to be funny, um, and they can hurt someone, but then the, the true nature of a healer comes through, and, you know, sometimes that's how... Um, I don't know why I feel like that's how they keep people in their life. They kind of manipulate the situation where they wrap people in their webs and keep them. It's almost like, you know, I, I, I heal, I can heal every one and every each one of your insecurities or issues, but I'm the one who kind of stirred up the pot. So they may stir up the pot and then proceed to heal you and they may stir up the pot in a very um light-hearted um fun way um and and then proceed to heal it and you may create this idea in your mind that oh this person um can dig so deep into me this person can see me for who i truly am just because they stirred up things that you didn't want to talk about perhaps um through jokes and stuff and you view them as someone who sees you and then heals you. But I would be careful because at some point this dynamic can be also considered violation of your boundaries. Now, again, with the fool, this person may not realize that they're doing that. But um, because they have assumed the role of a healer, they assume that this is the only thing that keeps people in their life. Um, this is the only thing that maybe creates a stable connection, a good relationship, the fact that they can heal. So if you don't give them signs for, hey, I'm open to share this and that with you, um, they would, as I said, stir up the pot in some sort of way. So that they have something within you that they can heal and that you can be grateful for and consider them a great friend. And yes, it's not, it sounds like manipulation, I know, but it is absolutely and totally possible that this person does not realize what they're doing. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just something that their subconscious is doing, their instincts are pushing them to do that. So perhaps you can perceive this person as someone very positive, high vibe, very healing, um, very open, you know, to different conversations and being thick skin and being able to dive into just anything. But the truth is that, you know, how much this person shares with you. Now, I think it's going to be very telling of the relationship if this person also shares their struggles and their pain and they allow to be healed themselves, they take off the mask from time to time. That's a good sign because this person is genuinely interested in helping you, digging deep into you and getting to know you, but they also want to share about themselves. There, there isn't this double standard where I want to dive deep into you, but you're not going to get to know me. There isn't this double standard, but if there is such a thing where they don't let you in themselves, well, then this person is playing a power dynamic where, again, I am... I, I'm your savior, I'm your healer. So yeah, you gotta be careful with that. They're, they're dipping, the, um, dipping, sorry, they're dipping their toes into this savior and victim dynamic. You know, of course, these are um, separate archetypes that I have in the deck, but these two coming in combination, I'm being led to see that. Even though I didn't get the specific cards of the victim and the uh, martyr, the savior, I still get this dynamic here. Now, what is truly laying underneath? <laughs> the venom. Oh my goodness. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. It's kind of like snakes, you know. Um, the venom is within them, but... <laughs> But it doesn't poison them, but it can poison other people. I think this person is afraid that they have um, that they have the cure for the venom in others, but this very venom is within them. So it's almost like, you know, I can cure your demons because I've been living with them and I understand them, but I... But I'm also, you know, they are within me as well. So, I, so I'm part of your... 
of the reason why you feel this pain. So I feel guilty and I want to heal it within you, but I don't believe I can heal it within myself. That is something really deep uh, that they think and feel. Um, and that is one of the reasons why, you know, this person may, um, they may try really hard and they may try, you know, a lot to to keep up a, a good mental state, a good emotional state. Because they, I feel that they are afraid that if people know that they learned how to be such great healers by healing their, their own demons and still working on them, if people knew, people might be afraid of them. And that's why this person is not sharing necessarily how they reached the wisdom that they reached. Maybe they, they're not sharing the personal experiences. They may talk about the books they read. They may talk about um, other people that they've um, seen a dynamic going on with, but they wouldn't talk about their personal experience with that venom and how they healed it. But the truth is that this person is actually a great healer exactly because they healed or they're working on healing themselves and because they're so self-aware and know themselves so very well they can see those dynamics in others as well they can they can spot the issue within others too but but yeah they they don't want to share where they get that wisdom from because they don't want to scare people um i think that um this person can really trick you especially because yeah it's this is about you um this is how this is what they show to you and this is how they um appear towards you um sorry to you so this person can really easily trick you into believing that you know them okay um that they have revealed a lot of things when they really have not um and they and, and they can really downplay what they go through. Mm, the sword. Wow. Yeah, this person has sort of Gemini or bipolar energies here. So the signs that I'm picking up on. Virgo, Capricorn. Uh, I don't know if I said Scorpio too. I'm not sure. But Virgo, Capricorn, and Gemini are coming through very strong. These are the three signs that I feel very strong in the pile and with the sword yeah this person has a very drastic mentality between what's good and what's bad they they do draw a very specific line and separate polarities um they definitely have a they're just very drastic, very extreme on the spectrums and they have a hard time blending um, different energies and emotions. That's why they're either super happy or super sad. And when they're very, very sad deep inside, they would, they may appear as the funniest, um, the most happy, the most exciting over to the top really overly happy you almost feel like this person is indulging in laughter way too much or they're indulging in jokes jokes especially way too much or they make a fool out of themselves and then laugh at themselves way too much it's like hold on what's going on <laughs> you know it's like it's funny to some degree but then it gets weird and yeah, um, that's because they draw just this very specific line between this is good behavior, acceptable behavior, loved behavior, and this is bad behavior that I should keep to myself. Mm, the sword, of course, in tarot speaks about truth. But um, honestly, you know, before I used to read the Ace of Swords in tarot as this is the truth truth is being revealed and while that is correct um, the sword has this other ability to divide uh, to divide things in categories and limit one's potential to understand the situation 
So, yeah, this person tends to put things in categories and they may try to hide that. They may be a bit of an OCD person <laughs> uh, type of person, but they hide this because, yeah, they don't, they don't want to be judged for it. Actually, this person does fear a lot of, a lot of their personality traits could be judged by others the wrong way. And yeah, they don't want to deal with that. Oh my god. <gasps> yeah, the judge and the sword coming together. That is actually uh, a very harmonious combination. They don't like to be understood. Oh, hello. Hold on. Okay, let's continue. Um, I think that this person uh, yeah, does not want to be judged or understood or seen on, on such a deep level because they themselves don't like to be labeled and put in a category, but they do it to other people to understand them. So, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> we humans do have this tendency to like do the exact things that we don't like or that we hate being done to us, you know. So I feel like this person is definitely learning integrity, meaning they're learning how to be more respectful. I think that they're learning how to communicate in a more respectful way, in a, in a less manipulative way. They're learning how to be honest as well. We do have a message of healing from their higher self. So let's see what it is and just blend the cards. Oh, start baiting. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> start baiting. <laughs> well, maybe someone here needs to get a shower, but start baiting. Okay. <laughs> Light body, crystal grid, transmission and activation. Uh, huh. Well, this is the purification process from the Venom. I think that once this person realizes that they are more than just the role they fulfill in society, they will release a lot of these, you know, a bit unhealthy behaviors. But again, deep, deep down, this person has a compass. Uh, a, a, a huge compass for um, morals, for values. So I think that um, this person is actually, they have these high morals and they are very connected to their higher self and they, um, they do, it's almost like unconsciously they judge their behavior from the perspective of their higher self and they're very connected. Now, no human is perfect, so of course they may portray some unhealthy traits and characteristics and behaviors but overall they are very connected to their higher self and um, in terms of understanding themselves and being accountable they try to do it as much as they can but sometimes you know their own ego kind of um, trips them and tricks them into feeling and thinking certain way um, but with start baiting the the healing message here is that <laughs> they are connecting with the healthier community and I think perhaps you guys are part of this. Let me know if you, because I'm getting this message for some of you, you are the ones introducing this person to a much healthier spiritual life. I feel like they have always had tendencies towards spirituality but never fully dived into them. Uh, or not in not in the way that you guys do, and maybe you've invited them to, you know, explore this um, celestial realm. Maybe you invited them to a healthier community overall. Like you, you so you make them see, uh, you made them see your friendships with others, how you communicate. Maybe you did introduce a much healthier friendship dynamic or partnership dynamic, and now they are on this, on the beginning of this journey of healing and this star baiting where 
they are purifying, you know, the human ego and the star baiting is allowing for their higher consciousness to come through in their physical body more and more and more and to activate this higher intelligence that they honestly do possess. Like they have all these seeds growing slowly, but you just came in their life and I feel like you uh, sped up the 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 growth. Is there anything else within those cards that I want to talk about, that I want to see? The 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 aura, it, it's interesting because it's very possible that the aura of this person shifted from muddy green to this light uh, turquoise colored, lighter tones of green and yellow and then blues here and there. This is the shift from, you know, a victim to a healer or... Um, I feel like for the longest time they could only see their bad side and maybe they even played it, you know, they played it out because they believed that that was all they were. But now this person is seeing more of their light side and yeah, they're still not fully there, but I think that through your connection they started their journey as a healer and they're learning how to be a better healer. Less ego, more higher self, um less um less manipulation more open communication and more trust and the thing another thing that i see is that they are learning how to trust people they're learning how to trust that a lot of people are inherently good and how can they dig out this goodness and this good nature within them and to share it with the world Any messages about this person? How do they view you? Like, how does this person feel about you? This can help us uh, see why they act the way they act. The hang pen. They see you as a stable pillar, as a center, um, someone who gives them a different perspective on things, someone who uh, keeps them balanced in a way. Um, you guys just, <laughs> it's like you root them, you see, you ground them. But you definitely give them a holistic perspective on life. A different perspective on life. I don't know why, but I feel like this person released an addiction around the time they met you. Um, they might be still releasing this addiction, but I'm getting, yeah, something, some sort of substance being released. How do they feel about you? How do they feel about you? Hold on, I, I feel like I'm getting visuals, so I'm having a vision of uh, a male with short hair, overly short hair, uh, and it's this just just slightly darker shade of brown. It's brown, chocolate hair, but a slightly darker shade. And I don't know why, but I only see the forehead area. So um, perhaps this person is really a lot of the time in their head. Um, their third eye is under a lot of pressure. They may get headaches or stuff like that. And I don't know why, but I'm also getting a phone and this urge to text someone or to text you, but they never do it. So I don't know if you guys are asking about someone that you're not talking to currently. But yeah, I'm having this vision and because with the thread around the, the, the around her legs with the hanged men, 
I picked up on this, you know, how they view you, well, they view you as someone that they have some sort of connection with, some sort of um, karmic tie, something needs to play out in this connection, in this relationship, but for some reason, it's it's at a standstill still, <laughs> uh, oh my god, it's at a standstill yet, and um, yeah, they are not fully, fully ready to, like, come through, you know, or even if you guys are on talking terms and you're communicating and everything, I just believe that they hold something back. They hold back some truth. That is the underneath, right? The truth and the judge and the venom. They hold some they hold back some truth because they don't want to potentially hurt you. Which is interesting. Because usually in a lot of dynamics, um, that's what they do unconsciously. They slightly hurt someone by violating their boundaries and then healing them and then it's almost like a a dopamine uh, power dynamic you know they take away from you then they give you a little bit and you're addicted <laughs> that's what that's what they tend to do um but yeah they also consciously intentionally they don't want to hurt you And we have a mask here, and we have a mask here as well, which is interesting. I'm hearing society put the mask on me, and I got used to it, and now I'm not taking it off very often. That's what they're saying. Cathedral? I'm hearing a cathedral. This person... Maybe they used to be religious until religion failed them or you guys used to be religious and you shared this to them. I feel like um, there was an institution that failed one of you or both of you and you connected over that, you bonded over that. Um, yeah, this is interesting. Page of Swords. Yeah, absolutely. This is student ears. This person wants to communicate a message, um, but you guys also discussed um how an institution when you were younger when you were students failed both of you it somehow did not live up to your expectations or to the promises this institution made and now you are much more wary of you know any centralized um, institution with power over you any authority they see you as Someone who wants to learn, someone curious, and someone that they can talk to. They can definitely communicate with you openly. But again, with this page, they might be afraid you're not mature enough to accept their demons on the level that they have faced them. They may also feel, in a sense, that you guys are walking in their steps. I don't know why I'm getting this, but they feel so connected to you because it's almost like you... They, they repeat the same pattern and the same um, path of evolution and development as you did. They're walking the same path as you did. Justice, the judge and justice. These are two very similar cards. Uh, this person sees you as influential and powerful. Um, and I think that... I think they want to know how to connect with people in such a powerful way like you do or how to how to claim your position like you do because again they are very they very much define their confidence by the social position they occupy and they want to have this confidence that comes from within like you have it. They do feel like you guys share values at the deepest core. And I actually think with the sword being what's underneath, they actually want to share these deep values with you. They're willing to communicate with you because you also have the page of swords. They're willing to communicate with you, but the hang with the hanged men, it will take them some time to see you from a lot of different angles. They want to observe you in a lot of different situations uh, with a lot of different backgrounds to make up their mind about what they can share and what they cannot okay i'm hearing i want to know what can i expose about about myself and not be judged or or um 
rem pushed away because of these things. Because when they share their deep core values, they feel like they expose themselves. I don't know, the art of communication and the psychology of communication is big for this person. It's a big deal. Maybe one last card. Okay, yeah, Eight of Pentacles. Um, they are definitely working on something in secret. They have hidden talents, secret hobbies, and things of that nature. Um, but you know what? They're what? Oof. Yes. They are working on their demons. Look at that. This is their own body and the different heads. This is a. This is an animal. These are humans here masks, a lot of faces, they're working on their own demons, they're working on the different pa parts of their psyche, so yeah, this person could feel like there is some sort of bipolarity disorder within them going on, they could be on the spectrum, of course this is not for everyone, but they could be, um, but this is someone who is so heavily aware that they are, you know, working a lot on this. Now, for my more spiritual people, those of you who... Those of you who are dealing with more esoteric, you know, and spiritual connections, this person understands the influence of the astral plane a lot, okay? So, they understand the importance of psychic protection and energy protection, and that's why sometimes they keep people away from who they truly are, because they don't want psychic attacks and projections onto them, they don't want astral forms attaching onto them, because people, you know, it's almost like they don't want people to manifest the wrong, undesired version of them for them, you see? That's why they don't share much of themselves and their true nature. That is something else I'm seeing here. And also, um, I don't know, but I see someone engaging with potions and herbs um, in their healing practices, perhaps. You know, this person could be very... Um, loving to animals, nature, and even insectoids, because... Because they value all life. Yeah, if you ask me, this person has a, an interesting starseed origin. I feel that they've been incarnated in a world where life is very different, very diverse and very different from us. Um, the Life had a very different form and a very different style of communication. Um, so yeah, they value all life, life in all forms. Okay. I feel like if this person invites you in their home, in their house, this is it. Like, they trust you. Even if they don't reveal everything about themselves, they trust you. Because I feel like their home holds a lot of their secrets. Um, it's almost like the things that they have in their home reveals a lot about their character. So they're very careful who they invite and who they don't. And if they invited you, or if they eventually do so, this person trusts that they can be molding their their demons and their you know their soul while you you're getting to know them and that process. And it's like this is big for this person to trust you and to share the process of their development because you will see all the cracks and all the imperfections and they are confident in themselves from the perspective that they know they're working on it. They know they're working on themselves, okay? Um, but inviting you on this journey where you witness the process of perfectioning, um, um, of perfecting themselves, you seeing that process, that journey, this is big for them. This is true vulnerability. So, yeah. <laughs> That's all I have for you guys, for your final one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you resonated. I hope now you have a better understanding of this person. And this is not for the sake to, I don't know, like, spill the tea or, like, you know... Um, 
again, violate this person's consciousness and stuff. It's more so that you guys understand them better and you don't judge them as much so that you just you just have a, an, a look on what is truly going on. Again, for me, knowing the truth leads to the highest good of all. And that is always my intention when I do these readings. So, pile one, if you enjoyed this, let me know in the comment section below. You can like and subscribe to the channel. You can like the video. Commenting also helps a lot with the algorithms and stuff. But sharing with your community is the, the best thing that you guys could do. And I would highly, highly appreciate it. Another way to support me is to donate to one of my links. Either PayPal or use my coffee platform where you metaphorically buy me a coffee. But not just metaphorically. I'm a coffee addict. So actually you are purchasing me a cup of coffee. A cup of really nice cappuccino with coconut milk <laughs> that is what i always get anyways so yeah i hope you enjoyed this again let me know and um let me know what type of content are you interested in me putting out there uh most recently and most soon because i have ideas of course and i will always listen to my intuition but your guys' suggestions can also serve me as a as inspiration so i will always take them in consideration even if you don't see me you know following through on these uh, i might do it in the future so never hesitate to share what you would like to see what topics would you like me to cover um and yeah Thank you so, so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hello, hello, Pile 2. Welcome to your reading. So let's see who is this person truthfully, really, who are they? Let's get into it. So, um, I, think I, I, I think I didn't mention this in the intro, but I did in Pile 1. But just in case, these cards will reveal what shows up, what your person shows to you, what is the mask, the persona and so on and so forth, what they show you um, and then here we'll see what they don't show you, what is underneath that mask. But another thing that I want to mention, this is not just the mask, so it can be part of their actual personality, it's not just a way to trick you or manipulate you, it can be part of their actual personality, it's just that th these are the only parts they've decided to reveal and these are the underlying energies that also concern your relationship, okay? So yeah, this is not just a mask, this is not fake and true personality, this is more so a surface apparent personality and more hidden, more reserved traits. So let's open up the cards. Advocate. Oh, okay. I love that. <laughs> I think in the um, personality test, there is this um, there is this personality type of the advocate. I think I had that. And this is basically this nice balance between. Of course, I said basically, on a basic basic interpretation, nice balance between extrovert and introvert person, because um, they need their personal time and space to investigate, to connect data, uh, collect and connect data, um, and so on and so forth. But then they have to communicate that in order to argument themselves, right? In order to defend someone or the, their own um, their own self. And this is where the extrovert um aspect of them needs to come through needs to come out so yeah this is a this is a sweet talker this is a great communicator um <laughs> wow light attribute inspires you to put compassion into action perhaps this is someone who is very involved in what's happening globally what's happening ecologically they could have a lot of aquarius um Virgo placements, Taurus placements as well. This is someone very preoccupied with Earth, with planet Earth, the future, how to protect it, um, how to create a better society. Basically, that's what this person really shows you to be part of their personality. Visionary. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh, I love this person. 
for now because <laughs> of course this is the surface level capacity to envision what is not yet conceivable to others willingness to proclaim a vision without regard for personal gain uh, of course these are the light attributes i'm also considering the shadow attributes but we're going to discuss them later um so yeah again a lot of um aquarius placements so Pisces, Aquarius, Virgo, these are the, the three main, main signs I am channeling here because Aquarius would have that, you know, vision for the future, um, global uh, orientation, Pisces too, this humanitarian aspect of Pisces comes from Aquarius, that is before Pisces, on the natal wheel, on the chart wheel in astrology. Then a Virgo, why Virgo? Because Virgo likes to serve and Virgo is the opposite sign of Pisces. So yeah, Virgo likes to serve, Virgo likes to be practical, useful, helpful. That is what this person wants to be. Um, they have a vision for the future and with the advocate, they want to sweet talk everyone into embracing that vision, accepting it as the correct way to do things, as the um, most fair way to do things. So they're very passionate. I feel like these people, uh, for Pile 2, your person is showing you their huge passion um, for, you know, equality, fairness. Um, creating a better tomorrow could be the, the motto, the slogan for this person. With the visionary, you know, this person could be slightly psychic or intuitive because they just have a hunch about what's to come, what is the future, um, what events are about to happen. And um, this person could be an advisor, like big time. Advocate with visionary is a great combination. They could advise people, they could be a coach. Um, a manager of some sort, a creative director, and I think um, I think when this person feels like they're struggling with money and you know financially, materially, or with confidence, they may sell themselves themselves short or um, compromise a little bit the. the righteousness, the fairness, the the humanitarian aspect of their vision and what they're adv advocating for, they can compromise that in order to make it more fitting to desired products and services to obtain, you know, um, monetary success. But I don't feel like the, that they do this often, to be quite honest with you. I feel like they they barely do that because it hurts their ego, it hurts them on a deep level to go against themselves and against um, their beliefs and their vision like that. They don't want to do it no matter how much they're struggling. I feel like just that this person has such a, a deeply a deeply rooted ego in, in working for the highest good of all that when when that is threatened, when the highest good of all is threatened, their ego is threatened. So they can barely do it. They cannot go against themselves. This is like the artist that paints, for example, a social event, like something happening in society, they paint this topic um, in their artwork and um, someone tells them, now if you paint this um, for, um, you know, for the benefit of this country or this um, community, you know, or if you pick sites, if you pick a particular site, you're gonna make so much more money. But they're like, no. My opinion on the situation is completely different and I'm going to paint my opinion on the situation. So, yeah, I really like that. I really do like this. Um, 
this unshakable nature. Honestly, honestly, uh, these cards are <laughs> nice in combination because, of course, we need to see what's underneath. But I feel like this person doesn't really care so much about who they are necessarily. Yes, they identify with, you know, being useful and um, being helpful, um, doing the right thing, doing right by society. They do feel connected to this personally, but they are not the main focus. So yeah, they, it's more like their work and what they do represents them, not vice versa. They don't represent their work. Their work rep represents them and um, their identity, their name, their persona is not as important to this person. And that's why I feel even in relationships, they don't feel um, tempted to lie about who they are, to make themselves feel or look better than, than who they actually are. They don't consciously or actively try to put a persona in front of you instead of their true nature. Um, it's just that they're not so focused on themselves, so you may feel like you only know what they do and what they're passionate about, but you don't know them personally, like, on day-to-day -day basis. How do you like your sandwich? How do you like your cup of coffee? Um, you know, like, what did you dream about? They may not, they may not share some personal, uh, details or some intimate details about their life that make you grow closer to this person, but they can share you their vision, uh, share with you their visions for the world and their passions, but that might be the main thing you guys bond over or that they show you. Now, what is underneath the surface? The seat. The healer. Pile number one had the healer in these two. But pile number two, you guys have it underneath. Interesting. And the mountain. Oof. Wow. Okay. Interesting. You know what I'm noticing, actually? She is holding... She is helping this tree grow. I believe this is a tree. Yes, it is. And look how similar these two spheres look. This ellipse and the sphere. And then you have the seat, which is also kind of similar. This is a pearl. And then you have that over here. The venom of the snakes. And I'm like, hmm. There is this um, universal archetypal imagery of the cosmic egg of that, of the cell, of the egg. And it's about, it's about life, um, birthing life, birthing things into existing, existence. This egg contains the entire blueprint for an entire universe. This is the archetype of the cosmic egg. And usually a snake or a dragon or something protects the cosmic egg. And with the seed here, again, in one small seed, you see the, the potential for eons and eons of evolution. This person is a guardian. They are a guardian of ascension and evolution of people and humanity and consciousness, spirituality, connectivity. They are a guardian of the planet as well. I don't see much difference between who they appear to be and who they actually are. But one thing that I don't like here is that this person, they may not know who they actually are um, apart from their global engagements and their, you know, humanitarian engagements. They're so merged with this need to protect something with this ideal that they're trying to live up to and make everybody else live up to. I 
I feel like they see the root cause of um, of pain. They can get to the root of pain. They can get to the root of shaky foundations. They see where it came from. This person has not only the ability to be a visionary, I feel like they they have an intuitive understanding of the past and history as well. They may not be the most educated person historically or poli politically or be in whatever area they engage in, but they have an intuitive understanding of what's... Um, proceeded? Preceded? Of what's been before the the present moment, you know, what's been the history, what's been the the chain of events that triggered this current present situation. They understand that, and they also see where it leads to. So yeah, this uh, whoever you're asking about, this person is a powerful leader. This is who they truly are. Because the topic of the pick a card was, you know, who is this person really, you know. They, this is a lot of 11th house energy. This person will always care about others um, before the, their personal, you know, needs, before their personal relationships. This is the type of person who would choose, I don't know, like the, the, the country or the community, their friends even, before they choose their family, loved ones, before they choose themselves. They always choose like the bigger collective. And deep down underneath, they know that they're meant for something great. They know that they're meant for a great journey to reach the top of the mountain and to, like, have this sort of ascension experience where they communicate with the highest version of themselves. This is what the mountain represents, reaching the top so you can communicate to what you believe to be God, angels, um, your higher self, the higher power, higher intelligence, whatever. Oh, I don't know why but suddenly I got hit by this thought, by this idea that for some of you this person is very um, invested in building uh, something in the vir virtual world, something virtual. And yeah, I'm not a fan of that necessarily. Um, and as I said, I think that they're very connected to nature. But for a few people watching this, you're asking for someone who is trying to apply uh, this etiquette, um, this social, you know, humanitarian behavior and um, philanthropic... Um, orientation, they're trying to build that into a virtual group, um, maybe into a virtual reality where, I don't know, like there's there's like a school and a virtual reality system or something. Some of, some of you, your person is engaging in that as well, or they're trying to make the digital, um, the digital world a better place. That's another thing that I see. So this is a healing message from their higher self. You're not... Oh my god! <laughs> You're not alone. Isolation, physical connection and community. What did I say? This person, this person, they connect with people. They connect with people pretty much on a mental level. And they would like argument their point. And they connect with people mostly when people say, I think you're right, or I want to hear your plan, what's, what's, what's your plan? So if you guys have different opinions, this person can immediately feel disconnected from you. And I know this is not the best thing to hear, but it is just what it is. Um, they value intelligence and they value, um, you know, dialogues and even disputes from time to time. But... They don't like it when people don't, at the end of the day, arrive at the same conclusion as they did. That is their shadow now. They always think they're correct. They always think they're right. They think that they have the best plan in mind. And with isolation and physical connection um, and community, 
again, I'm thinking about the digital world and establishing connections. Um, in between, with a lot of space between each other. They have a lot of physical space between themselves and their community. So I do feel like for most of you, your person wants to be influential through social media. And again, not because of who they are, but because of what they do, what they participate in. They wanna, they wanna um, make people acknowledge certain ideologies and certain movements that are taking place in the world the lesser known movements especially yeah and this person doesn't mind being in the shadow um they just want their idea or ideal to shine and and develop and grow in people, not their personality, period. But yeah, it's interesting because they could have some sort of, I don't know, weird way of engaging with electricity, electronics, um, the digital media, the digital world, this Aquarian energy, you know, it's not just about the vision of the future and humanitarian aspects. Um, of the world, humanitarian, you know, things of the world, but also technology. So, um, because we have the seed, you know, this person could be actually carrying some um, ideas about technological advancement coming from other civilizations that they were incarnated in. So they could be a star seed, but I feel like for many of you, this person is not awakened to the idea that they are a star seed. Like, you may see this within them, but they're not awakened. And their higher self is saying, you're not alone. Uh, the, the negative traits that this person can experience because of who they are could be rejection or feeling like they're the only one being intelligent enough to understand the consequences and what should be, uh, what actions should be taken and stuff like that. Uh, they feel like they're the only one having this higher knowledge but they're not and i think the two guys um are supposed to kind of help them break from their shell or embrace that even people with different opinions can be part of this greater movement and can be part of their community they may have a, an issue with physical connection and physical touch. When they fall in love, they may be a bit aloof, a bit detached, again, because their mind is just on, on something else. They're very Aquarius-like, very much Aquarius-like. Okay, um, now I should just pick a deck and use it. I guess I'll be, I don't know, I guess I'll be working with this one. Uh... Yes, let's do it. This one will work. <laughs> okay. I now want to see how this person views you. So, you know, we have a better understanding of who they are, why they act the way they do with you. But again, I don't feel like they have much of a mask, to be honest. You know, the only thing that they actually hide... Oof. Okay, this is getting interesting. The only thing that they actually hide is that sometimes they question spirituality versus technology and logic. They would question logic and the inexplicable events that take place. And um, yeah, because with the mountain, this is a this is a spiritual awakening journey the mountain card, this is what it represents. And I feel like sometimes when they also take in consideration the spiritual side of life, their vision glitches. It, it glitches, they have no explanation, they struggle a little bit. <laughs> it's almost like, you know, they create this... Um, communication, this electrical impulse of information between themselves and their higher self, and it creates a glitch. <laughs> and um, 
they feel like they're a bit afraid of that. Okay, they they are a bit afraid of adding a, a new filter to their belief systems because they feel like they will have to rebuild their vision for the future from the ground up. And I think it's happening slowly, bit by bit. They have like an infusion of a spiritual perspective on life and it completely shakes them up. It shakes their core. Queen of Cups, how they view you. They view you as this creative, intuitive person with emotional intelligence, with the type of intelligence that they do not necessarily understand. Listen, this person is very smart. Very smart. Aquarius energy, like, this is the higher intelligence. But they lack something called water and intuition and emotional understanding. And emotions don't have the same patterns as thoughts do. Emotions can be ebbs and flows. They come and go in waves. They hit you unexpectedly. You don't know where it comes from. And um, some some may say it's your hormo hormones acting up or stuff like that. Yeah, but for all of you on my channel, we should know that energy is the first thing that influences. Then we have thoughts and feelings and so on and so forth. But emotions are much dif more difficult to track in terms of patterns. So you guys can do that. And I think that this is what they see within you. You guys tap into realms and perspectives and visions. You are a different type of visionary that they cannot access this. And sometimes they reject it. But the deeper under core reasons why they reject it or they may try to persuade you um, their way is because they are afraid that their entire belief systems need, need to be rebuilt. If you persuade them into your vision. Queen of Wands, they see you kind of witchy. I don't know, like with the Queen of Wands, they see you as an empowered um, individual, an empowered being. They see you as a creator, someone who tends to their personal reality, someone who takes responsibility for what they experience with that Queen of Wands, someone who has a lot of power and someone who has this mystical attribute, this mystical sort of power. Like they, they don't know necessarily where it's coming from, but you just have it. It's oozing out of you. How do they view you? How do they view you? Seven of Cups. Huh, interesting. Because you guys you guys have resources and they view you as someone who has all their dreams and wishes, you know, like on display, but they don't know how you get those, or where you get them from, how how the entire dynamic of you making your dreams come true takes place. Another thing that they often would see you as an illusion yourself, like you offer all these great qualities and traits and everything, but it's very, because they don't understand it logically, it's very hard to hold on to, it's very hard to grasp. So they may see that they may feel like you're also deceitful a bit with the Queen of Cups as well, like emotionally deceitful, emotionally aloof or uh, elusive is the correct word because they don't, they cannot hold on to you. And the thing is that they they don't necessarily see where your power or charm is coming from, and they feel like they cannot control that, and they don't know when they are gonna be under the spell. Okay, so they may feel like they're under a spell, like that you compelled them to believe that you can offer anything and everything on a silver plat, um, on a silver plate for them. You, they feel like you compelled them to believe and to see you this way. Yeah, they feel like they have bought into some big illusion about you, and um, in fact, they're not hiding much of themselves, but. They, they are interested in you, pile two. 
<laughs> okay. You are the mystery that they that they have a hard time solving. Also, they're not sure about your ideas um, and ideals. Excuse me. They're not sure about your ideals. They don't know if you're a good person or not. They don't know if you are open-minded or not. Are you conservative? Are you uh, are you open-minded to just anything? Are you pro this and pro that or not? Like, what is it? Because you have this flexible <laughs> mind that just bends and depending on the situation you take a different stand because you see a lot of things to be very subjective and very much needed to be put in a in a context in order to make a decision while this person may have very fixated opinions you know and they don't take context into consideration all the time. So that is something that they like about you, but they're also a bit threatened by it because they have a hard time defining what's your position <laughs> in this world. What, what are you standing up for? That's how they view you. Six of Wands, it came out in reverse, but let's let's just look at it this way. I don't know why, but this person feels like you have a powerful community. They want to have that too, in a sense. That's interesting. Or they want to be victorious, they want to be a winner, and they're not sure if they should do things the way you do things to gain that. Knight of Swords. They want to come forward with an idea. I feel like they want to offer you something. They want to offer you a journey, a, travel ex a traveling experience, an adventure. Um, they want to promise you success and um, they want to promise you some sort of recognition. I feel like they may see you as a bit more self-centered than, than themselves. So if they want to uh, have you on their side, they may come to you with, um, you know, this is what you're going to personally gain. With a promise of personal gain for you. Um, and you guys may be offended about this. I feel like, yeah, I feel like this person is making the wrong assumptions about you and you guys get offended because of that. And you want to see what's the deal about you then, you know, what's the deal about this person. And that's why you're watching your, um, you're watching this reading. That's what I'm feeling um, when I see the cards. Both of you want the other to be honest. And both of you are honest, it's just that... Your personalities come from... Uh, you have a different way of understanding people and that's what's causing misunderstandings between you, okay? Um, they're very narrow-minded in the sense of... Again, they don't necessarily take context into consideration. They just... They try to define morals that apply to everything. And you understand that that's difficult to do because life is very subjective. Experience is very subjective. They see the whole, they see the bigger picture and you guys see um, uh, minors. You see, uh, you see the little details. You see the smaller communities. You see the unheard voices, the, the outcasts. That's what you are standing up for. And that's why you can mold yourself depending on the situation, depending on what's required from you. You can be confident, you can be emotional, 
you know they they're they're a witness to this diversity to this chameleon like behavior and they want to learn how you communicate with people in that manner or how you gain people's approval or people's appreciation people following you people trusting you to lead them with the six of wands because that is how they see you it's almost like people follow you people listen to your words they listen to what you have to say that's how they view you and deep down underneath this person can be a great healer it's just that I really feel like this person needs a spiritual awakening to trigger these healing abilities. And I'm thinking of people with moon, the moon, for example, because that, that is a healing planet, or even Venus or Neptune in the 12th house, in maybe a water sign, or, um, or a moon in Virgo. Like These people are great healers, but their logic can block their healing abilities. That's how I see this person. And I'm saying, I'm showing you these cards because these define your person. These define how your person sees you. So I think that's all I have for you guys. That's all I have for Pile 2. I hope you guys resonated. Let me know in the comment section below. Um, definitely make sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel and you haven't done that and if you want to you know keep up to date with my content output i would love to hear any opinion on what would you like to see next as a team you know topic of a pick a card or do you do you want to see like an astro video or something um are you interested in the new and full moons would you like me to share you know my two cents on them and yeah that's pretty much it other ways to support my channel is to donate to the links i have my paypal i have my coffee platform where you can buy me metaphorically coffee um these small donations really contribute and make it possible for me to continue to create these videos because yeah i have to also take care of myself as every other individual out there and yeah, these are just very helpful. So thank you for all of you who have been donating and you have been um, purchasing extended readings and so on and so forth. You've been contributing so much to my work. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know how you guys resonated. Let me know if you enjoyed this, if it was useful. And I hope to see you in my next pick a card. Bye. Hello Pile 3 and welcome to your reading. So let's see who is your person really and um, you know what are they showing to you versus what is lying underneath. We're going to get healing a healing message from their higher self and if you get to communicate that with them that would be great but that is just general um, a general healing message even for you and how you see this person. Um, and of course, I'll be pulling tarot cards to see other things. Now, these two cards will represent what they show to you. This is not necessarily their fake personality, but it's just what aspects of themselves they're showing they're showing to you. So, ooh, we have the bully. Wow, wow. Uh, Well, trigger warning if you want to listen to this reading, but yeah, big trigger warning. But what I see is that this person might be showing their aggressive side to you, their, you know, um, hurtful side to you. They may feel, they may unconsciously feel like something within you threatens them and that's why they act the way they do. Hedonist. Oh my god, that is such a bad combination. Because this can literally indicate someone who indulges in substances and gets aggressive. And I hope that is not the case for most of you. I mean, actually, 
I hope it's not the case for any of you. Let me <laughs> let me correct myself, but the rea- at the end of the day, the reality of things is that some people will experience this, and I am so sorry if you're in this position. This person wants you wants you to see them as someone beautiful, gorgeous, but ooh, they may bully you about how you physically appear. Um, they may compare you to other people or compare themselves to you. I'm getting someone who fixes their hair a lot and stays on their phone a lot. I'm just getting these visions um, and this can take some time, I hope you don't mind. They fix their clothes a lot as well. I just see them constantly fixing their clothes, their hair. And they're very narcissistic, this person. At least that's how they appear to you. That's what they show to you. Um, And yeah, it is part of who they are as well. Especially of who they are with you. Um, Something about you threatens them. So they feel like they need to dominate in the situation to feel better about themselves. So... They may, I don't know, always dress up when they go out with you, but never do it with other people. They may always try to be perfect around you or to manipulate you into, I don't know, like embrace your natural beauty, blah, blah, blah. But then they don't embrace their own natural beauty. And it's like this double standard that they have. So I feel like they try to bully you in a passive aggressive way, um, which... It's not better, but it's just, it's a different way uh, to do that. Um, yeah, they, they try to like manipulate you into ending up. It's like they predict situations and they put you intentionally in situations where you end up as, as lesser than them. <laughs> What is truly underlying beneath the comic reversed, the creator reversed, and the vowel, okay, let's keep it this way. I feel for many of you, their parents had a bad relationship where I feel either their mom or or their dad stayed with the other person, with the other parent, despite this being a toxic relationship. And they saw how the toxic parent manipulated the other parent to stay in the connection. And I think this is what they've done to you. Or this is what they do to people in general, to partners. And this is what you're seeing, what you're witnessing within them. The comic and the creator both in reverse. This person has a hard time to recreate their story. You know, they are, they could be repeating like the same story. I've been through this, I've been through that. And they, they tell the same story over and over and over again in the exact same way. And it's almost like this person never grows out of, of their past experiences. They may also have the tendency to make you promise things like, and then until you say, I promise, they never let the, 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 the issue go. They never let the situation go. They're like, do you promise me? You sure? You promise? You know, they need that deep, deep, deep assurance that you're going to follow through on certain actions that they want you to follow through on. This person really struggles to find their voice. They couldn't find their voice as a child. And I think that domination was the only way they saw out of um, 
being a doormat basically i'm sorry to say it like that but yeah they do try to dominate with physical beauty and attributes they do they do try to dominate dominate with communication and communication style and um yeah they need to feel on top they have a blocked sacral chakra which makes it feel like nothing is ever enough to, uh, enough nothing ever satisfies them they can never express their creativity and it's like they have suppressed creative talents and because of that they could be indulging in substances you know because they lack emotional satisfaction with life and their pursuits They appeared as a bully, maybe they appeared um, as an aggressor and all that. But the truth is that, I mean, I'm not excusing this type of behavior, by the way, don't like get me wrong. But the truth is that they need deep reassurance that someone will not leave them. And I feel like, I don't know how they learned it, but it's like... Making people fear them is their way of securing that this person will not leave because they're so afraid they respect me now. With the creator reversed, I feel like they don't want to share with you. They don't want to share a creative experience. They don't want to share themselves with you. Um, and yeah, uh, they can see sometimes people as objects or as tr trophies that they collect. You know, how many friends do I have? How many followers do I have? Let's open the healing message from their higher self and then we'll see. Um, we'll see how the cards connect. Your light... <laughs> Your life is a canvas with the creator. This is interesting. I had a client today that in her reading we had these two cards come up together, but it was in it was a pride. And I told her how crazy it is that the creator and the your life is a canvas card come out together. Like that's such a synchronicity. But yeah, as I said, um they don't wanna take accountability for their creations. They don't wanna be responsible basically for the life that they create for themselves and they oftentimes blame destiny or life or circumstances they blame external circumstances for the way they feel and that is not okay to do at all They don't want to assume responsibility. With the comic reversed, I mean, obviously, underneath this person, underneath their unhealthy behaviors and habits, lays a lot of pain, untransmuted, stagnant pain with the comic reversed. It's like, they do try to cover it up, they do try to badge it, uh, to bend it, but, but the wound does not heal like that. You don't just isolate it and just, you know, keep it under band-aids. It doesn't work like that. You need to take care of it you need to i don't know like put things on it to heal look at it is it healed how is it doing do i need to add extra something <laughs> you know like it's a process and it takes 
you to look at your own wounds, actually. That is the first thing you have to do in order for something to heal. You need to acknowledge that it's there. And I think that this is something this person does not want to do. They don't want to acknowledge that a certain... They are a certain way. They don't want to acknowledge themselves as a bully. They don't want to acknowledge themselves as a hedonist. This person has a sharp tongue, for sure. They just want to enjoy life. Do their own thing, do what makes them happy, do what pleases them. But they don't care about the cost and who they hurt. While doing that. I feel like there is a secret promise that you guys don't know about. They might have made a promise to someone or they promised themselves something that now is causing them to, to be this way and to have a hard time changing. This person is a very fixed person in nature. I think, um, I think something that can be very telling about people is how they treat lower class, quote unquote, people, like, or service workers. Um, how they treat those people is very telling about how this person is in general. And maybe you guys have seen some red flags, but you ignored them. This person feels betrayed from their past and this deeply impacted them. How does this person view you? How do they see you? Oh, I think they wanna. Oh, I think they want. They want you to see them as someone rich or generous or just rich, you know, abundant, um, because they have, you know, this insecurity that they don't have creativity. Although they do, it's just blocked by trauma and. They may be jealous of your own creativity or, or your own abundance and talents. So they would try to overdo it, like to be better than you than, in, in that aspect. So that they don't, you know, fall behind. Um, and that they feel better about their lack of access to creativity. Queen of Cups, oh my gosh, how they see you. Um... A pile two had the same card, the Queen of Cups come out. Yeah, they see you as someone creative, abundant, abundant in imagination and creativity, and they try to outdo it with money. Like, for example, okay, you are an artist, but I am super rich, or something like that. Or you're doing what you love, but I'm living the best life and I'm having these adventures while you're just working. You know, they, they, they try to minimize your joy and they try to make you believe that your life is not full of joy. the empress but that's how they truly see you they see you as self-sufficient and abundant and that's why they're so afraid you're going to leave 
They are afraid that if they support your independency, you will wake up to the truth that you don't need this person, that they are not good for you. But it's easier to keep you in a certain mind, mindset, uh, in a certain state of mind instead of supporting you and risking, uh, risking closing you or changing themselves. It's easier to keep you with this mindset instead of changing themselves. So it's easy to manipulate you than change. Hmm. I am so sorry to say it, but I'm sensing a lot of gaslighting in this connection. So you gotta watch out for this, please. You know what other possibility I see here? This person was someone... I'm getting a whole storyline. Hold on. This person was someone who was not nice to you. They bullied you or they did not see your beauty, your light, your how good of a person you were. They, they didn't see your quality. Then, things changed. You blew up or something happened, you you changed, your energy shifted, now they see it, they're in love, um, or they really admire you, if they're not, if this is not a romantic connection, they admire you, they see your beauty, they see how independent you are, they're like, whoa, this is a completely new person, um, this person is so deep, they have their things going on, they have their things, um, you know, worked out, um, and now they're trying to compensate by overly like over um, overwhelming you with love and gifts and money maybe um and the truth is that they don't want you to see that what they actually need is a spark of inspiration in their life a spark of happiness and joy and their money does not make them happy it does not make them like they they know themselves it does not help them The money doesn't um, help them discover their purpose while you have you seem like you have discovered your purpose. You're you're walking towards that. And you're trying to tell them your life is a canvas, you can have the same. But yeah, if this is a friendship, once again, I see this dynamic where it got toxic. You broke it off and now you're back together and you guys have shifted and this person pretends to have shifted but they're all, all only trying to lure you back in their life and to keep you. So yeah, you gotta be careful around this person being too possessive over you and stuff like that because yeah, it stems from some insecurity here. And they're trying to make sure a promise you made before you broke it off in the past comes into fulfillment. Like, imagine that was a potential partner and you promised each other, we're gonna have kids or we're gonna do this and that. Now they want to do this and that. They want to marry you, they want to have the kids. They want to fulfill a promise you made. They're still salty about you breaking a promise. How do you deal you? The fool. They see you as someone free. Um, maybe a bit naive. Maybe they feel like they can manipulate you because you're naive. But they see you as someone free as, and someone with fresh energy. Like you're a brand new person. Now that they're getting to know you. You have matured from the past version of you. You're no longer a queen. You're the empress. And they feel like a fool. <laughs> Quite a bit. But I cannot, um, you know, ignore that this also feels like a friendship to me. It feels like a past friend or something. Because these two cards are similar, but the Empress is much more confident. While the Hedonist is a bit, I don't know, there are issues underlying this sort of abundance and this indulgence. And I feel like this is about a friendship that became toxic. There was comparison or jealousy. 
and yeah. Oh. Five of Swords and the Chariot. Five of Swords with the Chariot. Yeah, I think you bring this person a sense of a false sense of victory, a fabricated sense of victory, and they're addicted to that ability of yours, to that, you know, yeah, ability to make them feel good about themselves, to make them feel victorious. Something about the card with the chariot. It's usually about the journey and everything, but here we have a lot of like material oriented person and I think it could be something even about a car, a motorcycle, a traveling experience. It's almost like someone got something that the other did not and there is a there is this trial to compensate the lack. I think that this person will actively try to pull you in their direction so that you can be this supportive character in their life story. But I don't like the vowel and the five of swords because these are these are false promiser, promises or promises with agendas. Even the, the good the the good seeming promises like I'm gonna be there for you forever. It, there is this underlying agenda of manipulation, you know. I'll be loyal to you, so you have to listen to what I say. Things like that. And, yeah, I feel... I feel you guys need to set some powerful boundaries, because... In any other case, things can be worked on. People are not perfect. We all have how do I say, toxic sides to ourselves. We all work on these things. At least most of us, we try to work on these things. But with the bully and the hedonist, this person enjoys it. So it's like, mm, I don't like this. They may enjoy uh, being on top. You know, being the more powerful one. Um, they may enjoy exercising manipulative tactics and control. So, I'm really not a fan of these cards and this person. In some other case, maybe I would tell you differently, but these specific combinations, it's like, girl, boy, you better run, you better, I don't know, like, you better set boundaries because... It sounds like I am, <laughs> uh, I don't know, like I'm hating on your person, you guys, whoever this is, whether it's a friend, a romantic partner, a family member, but I'm just being honest. That's what I see. That's what I see, period, point blank. I don't see a lot of the potential for this person to change. The healing message of the higher self of this person is your life is a canvas. You can create just as much as anyone else. You can be as happy as anyone else. You can have anything you want just like other people have whatever they want. But the thing is that this person does not know what they want so they don't know what they want to create. So they go chase other people's dreams because they don't know their own potential. They don't know their own potential. So perhaps if you want to work on this relationship, if you want to hone a healthy relationship with this person, uh, if, it's, if it's not abusive, of course, um, help them and support them in finding their voice and finding their, their originality, you know, this would be um, helpful.
if you help them find who they are, their personal original self, they will feel this inner personal confidence that is based just on them, not on not on a power dynamic. And they will be such a great friend because I feel like they stick to people and they are loyal. They don't like betrayal. They don't they don't like abandonment. That is a huge trigger to them. But they can become a bully if they feel like someone is pulling away. Because they feel that sometimes people are their source of energy and when you start to pull away, they become a bully. So yeah, you got to talk to them about this. I think that this person will be open and receptive um, of such a conversation. Of course, talk about the details that resonate with you, um, that I tell you. But yeah, I think that this person has the potential to change and to improve. It's just that they need a long, long conversation. And they need reassurance. Okay. So maybe you make them promise you that they will be working on being a better themselves, a better version of themselves. They may see you kind of um, repeating patterns that the past female in their life did. And maybe maybe they wanted to like, I don't know, get, get back at someone from the past to bully someone from the past. And they're getting it back at you, however, because you remind them of someone. So yeah, you should talk these things out because Again, I see this person has the potential to change and improve, but it's not going to be easy. So you either want to deal with this or not. Um, you either want to deal with this or and still have boundaries or fully disconnect and have even bigger boundaries. Stronger, bigger, larger. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting something about travel here. This person wants to travel, they want to move somewhere and you don't want to go or vice versa and there is conflict around that. File 3, I don't know what else to tell you guys. I feel like that's all I'm getting. That is who this person truly is. That is why they act the, the way they act. Um, and I think many of you already know these things. And I hope most of you did not resonate with this file because this file was quite heavy. Whenever I get into those, I just hope people don't vibe with it at all. They don't pick it. They don't choose it. But I know some of you would. And yeah, let me know if it resonated. But honestly, I hope you didn't. Uh, and I hope this was all just... I don't know, bullshit. <laughs> so yeah, still let me know um, in the comment section below any suggestion to what future content you would like me to put out, like topics for pick a card. Would you be interested in, in the new moons and full moons, astrological updates? Um, and yeah, any suggestion. I may not act upon those suggestions um, immediately, but I definitely keep them as an, as an inspiration. And I definitely at some point transform them, like I take the idea, I transform it to what I intuitively want to create and that's how I make my pick a card. So make sure to, to comment, uh, like and subscribe and please, please share if you have friends who are interested in the types of readings I put out or the, types of, the type of content I create. Um, I'm sure you may know someone who would vibe with me as well, so make sure to, to share. That is super, super helpful to my channel. And thank you so much for being here. I hope I didn't trigger the shit out of you <laughs> because that was a pretty triggering pile, even to me, if you ask me. Like, I don't know. I don't know what happened, pile three. I just hope whatever this is improves drastically and you cannot even recognize the 
uh, the relationship because it's improved so much. But yeah, this is my reading. This is what I see in the cards. And I know it's not pretty, but it's not always pretty. And that's it. You can support me. I have my links for donations for my coffee page and my PayPal. Um, I have my wish list and stuff like that. My email, everything. Just go into my description. I love you so much, you guys. I hope to see you in my next video, whether it's a pick a card or an astro update. Um, I just wanted to highlight that I'm working more and more with astrology because I want to make that, that connection between the celestial bodies and consciousness so that we can move in harmony with the universe, not because we're ruled by the celestial bodies, but because we are them. We are expressions of them and we're channeling them and we have the free will to create our life as our own canvas and just use the energy to our service. So uh, I think you will enjoy the astro updates. So that's it pretty much. I hope to see you next time and I love you so much. Bye.